Previously on the advent of cyber. After handling unrestricted file uploads and SQLI vulnerabilities, McSkiddy continued to review Santa's web applications. She then discovered that Santa's team hadn't updated these web applications in a long time as they clearly needed more controls to filter misuse. Eager app, and then we're going to put in single quotation marks, and then we're going to say start on the line, open square bracket, because now we're searching for the characters, A to Z, lowercase, A to Z, uppercase, and then 0 to 0 to 9. We're going to close that and open a squiggly bracket, and we want to do a minimum of 6 characters in length and a maximum of 12 characters in length. I'm going to close that, end the line, single quotation mark, and specify the file of strings, and that should give us these usernames. Hello world and welcome to Hacks. We are back looking at day 18 of TriHackMe's advent of cyber and this room is about Sigma. To be perfectly honest with you, I've never dealt with Sigma before. I don't know what it is, but I've had a look through the room so far and what I've read, it appears to be a way to query SIEM systems, security information event management systems and get logs back in a structured way. It's a language that uses YAML as the format and you can use it to query very seem systems to get information about events that may have happened. Probably butchering the description there, but yeah, we're going to learn about it today. But first, the story. Compromise has been confirmed within the best festival company infrastructure and tests have been conducted in the last couple of weeks. However, Santa's SOC team wonders if there are methodologies that would help them perform threat detection faster by analysing the logs they collect. Elf McSkiddy is aware of Sigma rules and has tasked you to learn more and experiment with threat detection rules. So the author of the room talks about threat detection and how it's the blue team's responsibility to develop practices to look for abnormal activity within infrastructures, within ecosystems to identify signs of compromise, to identify like malicious behaviours. And this type of practice will involve analysing different logs and network traffic in order to identify threats. The author has then given us an attack scenario whereby Alf McBlue has obtained logs of the compromise performed by the Bandit Yeti. They then go on to explain how this can be matched up to a certain pattern within the cyber kill chain in that the Bandit Yeti created persistence by creating a local user's account that they could use during their attack, that they performed discovery, they gathered information about their target by running commands to learn about the processes and software on Santa's devices and search for potential vulnerabilities. And then execution. Scheduled jobs were created to provide initial means of executing malicious code. This may also provide them with persistence or be part of elevating their privileges. If there are misconfigured scheduled jobs that are running scripts that are overly permissive and a user has the ability to write to them scripts, you can use that as a method of privilege escalation. So you would just nip a little elevate to root in your scheduled task script and then when it gets automatically executed it elevates you to root. Or you can throw a reverse shell in a scheduled task if you have the ability to modify the script that it's executing. So the persistence discovery and execution we just talked about are known as indicators of compromise or IOCs and as you can see they've linked it to the MITRE attack framework to show account creation, software discovery and scheduled task. Now before we proceed the author has asked us to launch the box attached to this which you can do just by clicking the start machine button and then once it's up and running we want to navigate to it and explore the sort of various options that are available so there should be a run option a text editor a create rule option and a view log so we have the text editor the run option then these various rules that are in place and then i assume once we execute them we'll be able to view the log the author goes on to explain that sigma is an open source generic language developed by florian roth and thomas Pat's easy, uh, probably butchered that, my apologies. It uses a markup language called YAML, which is a syntax that allows for quick sharing of detection methods by security analysts. And YAML has the following sort of factors. YAML is case sensitive, files should have the .yaml extension, spaces are used for indentation, not for tabs. Comments are attributed using the hash or pound character. Key value pairs are denoted using the colon character. Array elements are denoted using the dash or the hyphen character. 
Sigma is vendor agnostic so that it can be ported into all different types of SIEM systems and it was developed to satisfy the following scenarios. To make detection methods and signatures shareable alongside indicators of compromise and Yara rules. To write SIEM searches that avoid vendor lock-in. To share signatures with the threat intelligence communities. To write custom detection rules for malicious behaviour based on specific conditions. So what I'm gathering from this is that it's like a standard language to communicate with SIEM systems, enable to query those systems for events and indicators of compromise to help quickly identify threats. And it looks like they're going to walk us through creating our first rule. So we can see there we've got the title, the ID, the status of it, and then the log source and what it is we're looking for. We can go onto the Sigma system and select create rule and this will create local account creation yaml because we want to find who created a account really. So the title is suspicious local account creation. So I'm just going to grab that, paste that into there. Cool. And then the user ID is giving us that as well. So I'm just going to grab that. I assume we can sort of name that what we want. The status, is it experimental? Yes. Just get rid of the comment and then get rid of that. Description, and then I'm just going to give it anything. And after a lot of copying and pasting, we have our Sigma rule, which we can run and it will give us the flag of THM, not just your user. The other flags are going to be a lot more complicated, obviously, but let's have a look. What was the question? So it wants the first flag from challenge one, what user account was created. So now we should be able to look through the logs and the Sam account name is Bandit Yeti Mini. So I'm just going to grab that, get rid of the space before it. Yeah, that looks good. And we can grab the flag as well if we can close this log and move on to the next one. And the next question asks us, what is the challenge? number two flag and what was the user path in the challenge two flag log file so let's have a look at challenge two I believe it's software discovery because they use some tactics and techniques and procedures to discover what software was running and if we come up to here you can see it was a process creation with the event id of one the service was sysmon the image was reg.exe command line query that was run was that so we're going to have to write our own sigma rule to look for these parameters Okay, so let's talk about the second rule, software discovery. We have these parameters, and then if we come down to the syntax, we can see this section here, where it's a random rule, where we can specify things like image ends with. So then we can specify the end of the full path. So in the case of number two, service creation, we can just specify reg.exe rather than the full path where needed. So if we run into troubles specifying the full path, we can just do image, pipe it, ends with and then put the parameter and the same with the command line we can just do command line pipe contains and then just throw hyphen v service version or something onto it to help it specify it so with that in mind let's go to our yaml creator i've already solved it but we're just going to create it and run it again and we're looking for uh what was it process creation i think we need a space there and then user id i'm just going to give it 1337 status is going to be experimental still description looks for service discovery indicator of compromise i realize i can't spell d-i-s-c-o author thm hacks date is the 18th of the 12th 2022 we're almost there guys log source so the log source i think we leave empty but i'm going to get rid of the comment and the product is definitely windows so let's get rid of linux and i know it's windows because of the registry query the service we know is sysmon the category uh is process creation i think yeah process creation all of this is already filled out for us look how awesome right detection selection so we know the detection is event id one which we had last time so if i just quickly refer to my notes we can do selection and then event id colon hyphen one and this is where we can start building up the query to get more specific results. So now we can look at image. So then I'm going to do enter image. And then I'm going to pipe that. And I'm going to do ends. And I'm going to do another hyphen. And I believe it was reg.exe. And then on the next one, we can say command line. And then we can pipe and say contains. And then we can do another hyphen and say 
hyphen V service version with a space there. And I think that's all we need. We can fill all this other stuff out. But if I run that, yeah, if I run that, it gets an error because we've already solved it and we're supposed to be creating a rule for challenge three and I can't see how to do it. But we're just gonna grab the flag from two and you'll just have to take my word for it that it does work, I promise. And we're gonna head down to the answers and we're gonna place the flag for challenge two. And we're going to answer the question, what was the user's path in the challenge to log files? So we're going to view the log and I think that must be the path there. Current bandit apt. Sorry, that just looked like a domain user rather than a path, but that's correct. Okay, let's have a go at challenge three. And now we know from, well, it asks for the flag and then it asks what was the MD5 hash associated with the challenge three logs. So if we come up to challenge three, we know we have all these different parameters like we did for the previous one. So if I try and split my browser, perhaps we can do this in a more efficient way. All right, can we close the logs? Okay, that looks a bit ugly, but it's not that bad. Right, so uh, let's create a rule. Uh, I wish I would have kept all that, actually. Do I have it in my notes? Let's grab that, throw it back in. Looks a bit messy. So where is the software discovery? Schedule task stuff. Okay, so we know that it's still Windows. It's still using Sysmon as the service. It's still a process creation, I think. Yeah, category is still process creation. Detection is still event ID 1. And we want to change the image to ends with SCH tasks.exe exe and then we need to add another one on i suppose which is going to be parent image perhaps and then pipe or is that all one word and then we can do ends with again i suppose ends with and then we'll just say cmd.exe need a space there not even sure if that parent image is going to work but we'll come back to it and then the command line contains scv but we want to just say calc exe i suppose and we can try running that and see if that gets us our answer Sim sigma rule too specific string calc focus on generic ioc so i've done a bit more reading i've got rid of the parent image because i don't think that's needed at all and i watched the video from the gentleman above and it's really good and really informative and explains this quite a bit so because these things are likely to change in the logs so a threat actor may not use cmd could use powershell.exe or a different program or something like that we need to look for parameters that are likely to remain consistent and persistent so schedule task create is going to be in there when he creates a schedule task so those are going to be essential so all i've done is i've removed that parent image and i've done command line contains all so it has to contain both of these and fingers crossed when we run it when we run it, it says we've completed it. And then we can get the flag, head back over to the room and click submit, submit. And then we have to look for the MD5 hash. So let's view the log and you can see the MD5 hash is IMP hash, MD5 hash. I'm gonna copy that. I think that's all we need. Let's try that. It seems a bit long. Whoops. Yeah, shout 256, I didn't see that. Oh, I should have noticed that. Submit, correct answer, and now we've completed the room. That was actually a lot of fun. Uh, when I first saw it and I was looking up all of this, I thought it was going to be way more complicated. It actually seems very intuitive, very simple, but to be honest, you could do it with grep. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. But yeah, I enjoyed it. Let me know what you thought. I hope it helped you get through the room. If it did, give me a thumbs up and subscribe. But that's all I got for you this time, and I'll see you next time. Kind regards.